Greetings and welcome to the Griffin Corporation Fiscal Fourth Quarter 2023 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A brief question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Brian Harris, Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Mr. Harris. You may begin. Thank you. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome everybody to Griffin's fourth quarter and fiscal 2023 earnings call. Joining me for this morning's call is Ron Kramer, Griffin's Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. Our press release was issued earlier this morning and is available on our website at www.griffin.com. Today's call is being recorded and the replay instructions are included in our earnings release. Our comments will include forward-looking statements about Griffin's performance. These statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that can change as the world changes. Please see the cautionary statements today's press release and then our SEC filings. Finally, some of today's remarks will adjust for items that affect comparability between periods. These items are explained in our non-GAAP reconciliations included in our press release. With that, I'll turn the call over to Ron. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, We're pleased with our results for the fourth quarter in the fiscal year, the record performance of our home and building products, HBP segment, drove our results as Clopay and Cornell Cookson continue to deliver strong free cash flow and operating margins. Our consumer and professional products, or CPP segment, improved in the fourth quarter, and we're optimistic about its repositioning for the future. For the year, HBP revenue increased 5% to $1.6 billion, driven by continued growth in commercial volume. As expected, residential volume decreased as backlog levels normalized. HBP had favorable price and mix across all products and channels. HBP's fourth quarter performance benefited from increased investment in marketing and sales for both residential and commercial channels, following two years of reduced activity due to elevated backlog and extended lead times. HBP also continues to invest in productivity and innovation to further drive growth, including expanding Clopay's Troy, Ohio sectional door manufacturing capacity and adding advanced manufacturing equipment to better satisfy customer demand for premium products. Turning to consumer and professional product segments, CPP's results for the year continue to reflect challenging market conditions with revenue decreasing 18% to $1.1 billion. All channels and geographies were affected by reduced consumer demand and elevated customer inventory levels. As we announced previously to address the impact of these market conditions on certain U.S. product lines, CPP is expanding its global sourcing strategy by utilizing an asset light structure. CPP's U.S. operations will be better positioned to serve customers with a more flexible and cost-effective global sourcing model. The global sourcing expansion project remains on schedule and within budget. By the end of December 2023, operations at two manufacturing facilities and four wood mills representing over 1 million square feet of space will cease. The remaining affected Ames locations will be transitioned during calendar year 2024. The global sourcing expansion at Ames is a key element of our strategy to improve the margins of the CPP segment, and we are pleased by the progress made so far. We will continue to provide updates throughout the year as we achieve additional milestones in the process. Uh, Turning to capital allocation, in fiscal 23, we took significant actions to deliver shareholder value and strengthen our balance sheet through cash dividends, stock buybacks, and debt repayment. In May, we increased our regular quarterly dividend by 25% to 12.5 cents per share, paid a $2 per share special dividend, and announced a $200 million increase to our share repurchase authorization, bringing the total then to $258 million. At the end of fiscal year, September 30th, we've repurchased more than 4.1 million shares for $151 million. In total, during fiscal 23, we returned $285 million 
to shareholders through dividend payments and share repurchases. It's also important to note we were able to deliver this value while maintaining our leverage at 2.6 times. Since September 30th, we purchased an additional 1.1 million shares. And this morning, the Griffin Board announced a $200 million increase to its share repurchase authorization, bringing the current authorization to a total of $262 million. Since April, Griffin has repurchased 5.3 million shares for a total of $196 million, or $37.15 per share, through yesterday, November 14, 2023. The share repurchases represent 9.2% of the shares outstanding as of March 31, 2023. During fiscal 23, we also took action to improve our financial flexibility and strengthen our balance sheet. We increased the size of our revolving credit facility from 400 million to 500 million and extended the maturity of the revolver to August 1, 2028. Also in the fourth quarter, we repaid $25 million of our term loan B facility. In fiscal 24, we will continue to use our free cash flow to support our capital allocation strategy with a focus on opportunistically repurchasing shares, reducing debt, and supporting our regular quarterly dividend. Also this morning, the Griffin Board authorized a regular quarterly dividend of $0.15 cents per share payable on December 14th, the shareholders of record on November 28th, marking the 49th consecutive quarterly dividend to shareholders. This is a 20% increase over our last quarterly dividend and a 50% increase compared to our November 2022 dividend. Our dividend has grown at an annualized compounded rate of 18% since we initiate, initiated dividends in 2012. These actions reflect the strength of our business, as well as our confidence in our strategic plan and outlook. I'll turn it back to Brian for the financial update and to provide details about our 2024 guidance. Thank you, Ron. I'll start with our fourth quarter performance and then review our guidance for fiscal 24. Fourth quarter revenue of $641 million decreased by 10% and adjusted EBITDA before an allocated amount of $135 million decreased by 3% both in comparison to the prior year. The related EBITDA margin was 21%, an increase of 140 basis points over the prior year fourth quarter. Gross profit on a gap basis for the quarter was 246 million compared to 250 million in the prior year quarter. Excluding items that affect comparability from the current and prior year periods, gross profit was 250 million in the current quarter compared to 253 million in the prior year. Normalized gross margin increased year over year by 360 basis points to 39.2%. Fourth quarter gap selling general and administrative expenses were 157 million compared to 166 million in the prior year quarter. Excluding uh, adjusting items from both periods, SG&A expenses were 146 million or 22.8% of revenue compared to the prior year of 148 million or 20.8% of revenue. Fourth quarter gap income from continuing operations was 42 million or 79 cents per share compared to the prior year loss of 415 million, which was driven by CPP impairment charges. Excluding all items that affect comparability from both periods, current quarter adjusted net income from continuing operations was 63 million or $1.19 per share compared to the prior year of 60 million or $1.09 per share. Corporate unallocated expenses, excluding depreciation, were $13.5 million in the quarter, compared to $14.2 million in the prior year. Net capital expenditures were $34 million in the fourth quarter, compared to $9 million in the prior year quarter. The increase was primarily driven by a net $20 million related to the acquisition of the HPP headquarters facility in Mason, Ohio, and the manufacturing facility for Closet Made in Ocala, Florida, as we capitalize on the opportunity to acquire these critical facilities for low market value. Depreciation and amortization totaled $15.4 million for the fourth quarter compared to $17.6 million in the prior year. Regarding our segment performance, revenue for home and building products decreased 7% over the prior year quarter, driven by residential volume, partially offset by increased commercial volume. Adjusted EBITDA decreased 9% compared to the prior year quarter, driven by the decreased revenue coupled with increased labor, marketing, and advertising costs, partially offset by reduced material costs. 
Consumer professional products revenue decreased 13% from the prior year quarter to $247 million. The reduction in revenue is primarily attributable to reduced volume across all channels and geographies driven by soft consumer demand, elevated customer inventory levels, and customer supplier diversification in the U.S. CPP adjusted EBITDA increased to $14 million from the prior year of $7 million, driven by reduced material costs, partially offset by the impact of reduced revenue noted above. In May, we announced that CPP is expanding its global sourcing strategy for products manufactured and sold in the U.S. to address evolving market conditions. Utilizing an asset light model enables CPP to continue providing high-quality products, strengthen its competitive positioning, and leverage industry-leading service and distribution that our customers and consumers expect. Further, these actions position CPP to achieve target EBITDA margins of 15% and generate substantial additional value for our shareholders. The project remains on time and on budget with completion expected by the end of calendar 2024. In the quarter ended September 30, CPP incurred pre-tax cash charges of 10 million related to the expansion of its global sourcing strategy. Regarding our balance sheet and liquidity, as of September 30, 2023, we had net debt of 1.4 billion and net debt to EBITDA leverage of 2.6 times, as calculated based on our debt covenants. We remain net debt and leverage neutral with a prior quarter ending June 23, even after returning approximately 72 million to shareholders via stock buybacks and dividends in the quarter. The prior year end net debt was 1.5 billion and leverage was 2.9x. Regarding our 2024 guidance, we expect revenue of $2.6 billion and segment-adjusted EBITDA of $525 million for fiscal 2024, which excludes unallocated costs of $54 million, charges related to the AMS global sourcing expansion of approximately $25 million, and strategic review retention expenses of approximately $10 million. We anticipate 2024 HBP revenue will decrease by 3 to 5% year-over-year due to the first half of 24 being compared to the prior year, which included volume from significant residential door backlog and the return to normal seasonal demand patterns, which historically has less demand in our second quarter ended March. These factors will be partially offset by market share gains in both residential and commercial. HBP EBITDA margin for 2024 is expected to remain in excess of 30%. The phasing of EBITDA performance will follow the same general trends as discussed with revenue, with an unfavorable comparison to the prior year in the first half followed by a stronger second half. With respect to CPP, we expect 2024 revenue decrease 3 to 5% year over year due to continued soft demand and high customer inventory levels partially offset by normalized weather. The first half is expected to compare unfavorably year over year as customer destocking continues with gradual improvement during the second half as inventory levels return to normal. CPP EBITDA margin is expected to see modest improvement year over year, particularly in the second half as the Ames U.S. operations transition to an asset light operating model. Total capital expenditures for fiscal year 24 are expected to be 70 million. This this amount includes the capital required to complete the 100,000 square foot expansion and equipment upgrades at Glopay's sectional door manufacturing facility in Troy, Ohio. Depreciation and amortization is expected to be a total of 63 million, of which 22 million is uh, amortization. We expect to generate free cash flow for the full year in excess of net income, inclusive of the capital investments. As we have seen historically, we expect a seasonal pattern with cash usage in the first half, followed by strong second half cash generation. This includes the impact of cash outflows related to the global sourcing initiative. We expect interest expense of approximately $103 million for fiscal 24. Our expected normalized tax rate will be approximately 28%. As is always the case, geographic earnings mix and any legislative action, including new guidance on tax reform matters, may impact rates. Now I'll turn over the call back over to Ron. Thanks, Brian. We enter 2024 with a proven strategy, skilled team, and strong balance sheet, positioning us for future growth while remaining flexible in an uncertain macroeconomic environment. Before we turn to questions, I want to acknowledge and thank the employees and management teams of our businesses. It's because of their dedication and effort that Griffin continues to see such strong operating performance. We'll continue to use the strong operating performance and free cash flow from our business to drive our capital allocation strategy to deliver long-term value for our shareholders 
This strategy will continue to include investing in our businesses, opportunistically repurchasing shares, and reducing debt. These actions underscore the confidence of Griffin's board and management in our outlook and strategic plan. Operator, we're happy to take any questions. Thank you. We will now be conducting a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star two if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star keys. At this time, we are limiting everyone to one question and one follow-up question. One moment, please, while we poll for questions. Our first question comes from Joe Alsmeyer from Deutsche Bank. Please proceed. Hey, everybody. Good morning, and thanks for taking the question. Good morning. And congrats on the results and the favorable outlook. I certainly appreciate also the, the detail around the cash flow. Um, maybe just to start on the HBP business, um, regarding the outlook, I think it makes sense. A lot of it depends or, or is hinging on sort of the comparison versus the first half of prior year. But I was wondering if you could just talk about sequentially what you're seeing uh, between your two kind of residential and commercial businesses uh, within there, just sequentially what the momentum in the business looks like. Sure. We, we continue to see uh, reduced residential volume, uh, though we expect uh, some market share gains in that in 24. On the commercial side, uh, we had uh, uh, volume benefits, increased volume in 2023, and we expect 2024 to uh, continue that trend. Um, we continue to have uh, good order volume in that area. Sounds good. And then just thinking about the margin guidance in excess of 30%, um, certainly that's above the long-term guide. Wondering if there's uh, something to kind of call out there to bridge between that and the guidance, but also uh, if you're willing to sort of put an upper bound on that on that guidance uh, rather than just 30% plus. Sure. So we do have uh, long-term expectations out there of 25 to 28%, even though HBP continues to operate at 30% plus, and we expect it uh, we were seeing nothing that is going to change that. We have that guidance out there, uh, perhaps a little conservatism, and also considering uh, downturns in the market, and that's what we think is the bottom of uh, for our business, those types of margins. But 2024, we're off to an excellent start, and uh, we see the 30% uh, being well within our capabilities and sustainability. So the, the business has proven itself uh, to be resilient. Um, the positioning uh, that has happened over a period of years of expanding the residential business, the development of our commercial business. Um, we have an excellent team doing uh, the best in this industry and we continue to be the leader and we expect to both grow the business, take market share, and maintain our margins for 24. Our next question comes from Bob Libick with CJS Securities. Please proceed. Good morning and congratulations on a great quarter and a really you know, great fiscal year as well. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, good morning. Yeah, so I wanted to start, I'm just sticking with HBP because it's um, obviously doing so well. It's been operating at full tilt. Um, you've gotten a lot of stuff out of backlog. And then you just um, talked a little bit about adding capacity. So maybe my question was going to be, before you mentioned, Troy, you know, where do you stand in terms of your capacity and where is it going? And then you mentioned the expansion at Troy. So maybe you could elaborate on um, the expansion at Troy, what you're using it for, and how it will change your, you know, throughput and your opportunity, uh, you know, how much – you, you can grow revenue from, from this, et cetera, et cetera, please. Sure. So uh, the project in Troy is to expand uh, capacity. Uh, looking at the higher end of what we uh, – the project uh, – sorry, the products that we have and to make sure we can continue to get that in the marketplace. Um, it also gives us a chance uh, to make sure we have equipment um, operational in the future and – spread out so we can maintain older equipment and get away from running the plant uh, 
you know, 24 seven. It gives us a much more uh, normalized cadence to ensure that we can properly maintain equipment, uh, avoids late shifts and weekend shifts, and, you know, continues to keep us in a position where we can grow our share. Okay, that sounds great. And um, I guess just for my, my follow-up, you, you started to answer this on the last question as well, but could you, you know, elaborate on the structural changes at HVP that have enabled you to drive margins so high and up to this, you know, strong and, and now obviously impressive and sustainable level. Um, just give us, you know, kind of just elaborate on, on the changes from, you know, then till now and why we, you know, you obviously have a strong vision for revenues and margins going forward. So let, let's, let's start with this is 15 years in the making. So go back to 2008 and the um, uh, global financial crisis. In 2009, we, we consolidated plants, we invested in the business, um, and we you know, took what was a weeding business and made it better, uh, invested in technology at both the plant level, created uh, software for our dealers uh, to be able to showcase our products for consumers to make ease of uh, order. Uh, we've expanded our relationship over the years with Home Depot and Menards, and we bought Cornell Cookson uh, five years ago and uh, expanded our commercial business. So the, the margin improvement story is a function of getting the strategy right, getting the operating footprint of this business modernized, building the brand at the consumer level, and Clope represents you know, the leading brand in um, residential garage doors. We went and expanded uh, our business by buying Cornell Cookson. So between Clope, Cornell Cookson, uh, and the brands that we have, Clope um, and Ideal, uh, we have become, you know, the leader in both residential and in commercial. The growth in our business, which we said five years ago, we saw the pivot on the commercial business as being both a way for us to diversify, and we always understood that it was going to be something that was going to be a margin enhancing. We went through COVID, we positioned the company uh, to be not just able to get through, but to continue to gain market share. So, you know, the margin improvement story has been happening over a very long period of time. It's now at a level that we believe we're, you know, in an elite class of manufacturers. Um, we don't necessarily get valued that way in the public market, and we've been taking advantage of it. We think this is a very valuable business. We think its growth is still in front of it. On the commercial side, the residential side continues to be strong for us. Our dealer network, our uh, big box um, positioning makes us, you know, the leader in the space, and we expect to gain market share and maintain our margins going forward. Our next question comes from Tim Wise from Baird. Please proceed. Hey guys, good uh, good morning. Nice job. Thank um, you. Good morning. How you doing, Tim? I'm I'm well. I'm well. Thanks. Um, maybe just on on CPP. Um, just kind of curious how we should think about. You know, I know you gave guidance for fiscal 24, and you expect EBITDA to be a little bit up above. You know, this past year, but how would you kind of think of the cadence there, Brian? And then. I'm trying to really kind of dive into like what the exit rate kind of looks like as you think about fiscal 25, just how we should kind of sequence the margin improvement in TPP over the next couple of years. Sure. So in the first half of 24, uh, we expect to be behind the first half of 23 as inventory levels remain high at our customers and the consumer remains soft. Uh, in the second half, uh, we expect uh, we have in our numbers the benefit of normalized weather it's hard to expect it necessarily, um, and uh, some benefits from uh, the initiative, the Global uh, Sourcing Expansion Initiative, will begin uh, as we get into the second half of 24. 
Uh, exiting 24, uh, we expect inventory levels to be at a more normalized level at our customers. And entering into 25, uh, we will start selling uh, sourced material opposed to the manufactured material, which we'll be selling in 24. Uh, as we get through 25, we expect to be exiting 25 at a 15% run rate and 26 being fully there. Okay. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, and then I, I guess just on the cash side of things, um, you guys have been, you know, really good on, on the, the capital deployment. Um, how are you thinking about buybacks, you know, through fiscal 24? Just you've been pretty active here the last few quarters. Is, is it, you know, fair for us to expect that to, to continue through the year? We continue to believe our stock is a compelling value and we'll take advantage of it. Thank you, guys. Our next question comes from Julio Romero from Sedotti & Co. Please proceed. Hey, morning, guys. Um, morning. On, good morning. On, on home and building products, um, I appreciate the, the, the revenue kind of guidance you guys gave for both segments. There's a 3 to 5% expected sales decline for HPP. Um, kind of embed any price degradation there and just maybe speak to how price is holding up within the segment. Sure. Uh, it does not assume any price degradation. Price is holding up well. Uh, you know, the marketplace is disciplined and ha is led by four large players. Okay, that's helpful. And then just, um, you know, you guys talked about uh, the uh, CPP and how global sourcing is doing there. Um, maybe just talk about the competitive landscape within the channels that CPP sells into, specifically the larger ones of repair remodel, or, um, retail and international, and maybe just talk about how each, how each channel is doing, if you could. Sure. Uh Australia, I'll, I'll just start with Australia, is uh, continuing to perform very well. Canada continues to perform well. Um, those marketplaces are, are seeing reasonably good demand. Uh, the U.S. and the U.K. are in the same uh, bucket where there's high inventory levels and the consumer is soft. Um, in the U.K., uh, they uh, haven't lost any market share uh, this is a matter of time. They're already an asset light model. And in the U.S., we are uh, transitioning to the asset light model, which will help our margins going forward. Um, and we continue to serve uh, the pro with high-quality products uh, that are sought after by them, and uh, that, that will continue. Our next question comes from Sam Darkash from Raymond James. Please proceed. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good morning, I'm well. How are you, Sam? I'm well as well. Thanks for asking. Um, I've got a bunch of questions, but I'll, I'll be mindful of time, and maybe I'll get back into the queue. Um, first one, I wanted to clarify, a, a, maybe or rephrase a question Tim asked earlier. Brian, the $103 million interest expense guidance for fiscal 24, how much repo does that specifically assume beyond what you've already done in October here? Uh, it does not assume additional re, uh, repurchases, but keep in mind we expect free cash flow to cover uh, repurchases. Gotcha. And then... As it relates to your free cash flow guide um, for next year being in excess of net income, first, does that include or exclude the prospective asset sales from CPP and then related the $70 million in CapEx? Is that the new normal run rate going forward or is that a continuation of some of the outsized CapEx that was seen tail end of this year? Uh, sure, a few things there. Um, the cash flow uh, does not assume the sale of any real estate. It does assume uh, the full 70 million of CapEx. Um, the outsized CapEx we saw in the fourth quarter uh, related to us purchasing real estate. Um, opportunistically, we bought two uh, facilities. Uh, so. We, you know, that will not continue. 
Um, the 70 million uh, in 24 includes the cost for Troy uh, expansion that we described, and for that matter, any capex related to the global expansion uh, for CPP. Um, we do not expect that trend to necessarily continue, and it'll come down as we get into future years. Uh, on the HPP side, roughly 2%, and over time on the CPP side, uh, less than 2%. Our next question comes from Justin Bergner from Gabelli Funds. Please proceed. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Good morning, guys? Justin. We're well. well How are you? Well. Good, thanks. Thanks for taking my questions. Just some cleanup questions. On the free cash flow, does that include the cost of the supplier initiative, the cash costs, the free cash flow being greater than net income? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then secondly, just help me understand, I think you made some earlier prepared comments on the volume trajectory in HBP over the course of fiscal year 24, and just any comments on the margin trajectory as well would be helpful. Sure. Uh, so in the first half of the year, uh, we have a difficult comparative to the first half of last year because it was elevated by backlog, uh, volume was elevated by backlog. We also expect this year to be uh, back to seasonal norms, where um, Q2 is the low point for the business, um, and then going into Q3 and Q4, it gets back to uh, a higher volume in, in the second half of the year. And we expect the second half of the year to be a better uh, comparative and, and be better results than the second half of this year, this past year. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the floor back over to Ron Kramer for closing comments. Uh, it's been an excellent year, and we're very excited about our future. Thank you. This concludes today's teleconference. You may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.